heard the study that something like the working parent spends on average, I think it was something, it was so low, it, it blew me away. It was like 20 minutes of interactive time with their child a day, right? And so I'm like, 20 minutes? And I sort of went through it in my head. I'm like, oh, that's probably correct when you, when you add it all up and the fact that it's gone so long and how much time is there actually this like engagement Right, and so I was like, "Oh, I think this is something that I really need to change, like, or you know, break this trend, right?" Because I see someone spending so much time with, you know, her little girl, her mother spends so much time with a little girl, and having such a, a, a better connection where she's barely talking but understands the words she's saying. And I'm like, "Well, I, I can't connect those. You know, I don't have that connection where I can, you know, really understand where she's even going emotional or where you see something, and mom knows." what she needs, whether she should give it to her, her dad doesn't know, and maybe he gives it to her when he should, right? It's this idea that, so, and so a, a ritual of play. And we started off by, um, you know, just reading books together, right? And so, you know, I'd sit there and read a book and point to the words, and it kind of evolved to the point where it's like, what I learned through this, you know, sort of the feedback I was getting from her is that she actually loved books with realistic pictures or art in them. Right, as a way of being able to understand what was being read, right? And so I read this poetry book, you know, and it's about, um, you know, it's all about, you know, like people going off, to, off on the sea and coming back. And, you know, it's this sort of nautical theme to it. And so she, every night now, she, she'll go and she'll, she can point out the stars and the moon and the sky. And it's because she's hearing the words while I'm reading the poem and seeing the things. And then all of a sudden, you see this moment where she wants to connect what she sees with the words that you hear. And so she's saying, moon but then she's also pointing to the word on the page right and so you see this like so this engagement right where it's like oh okay yeah how do you help how does knowledge build right and it's kind of through and it's the idea that the, the repetition of these books the reading of these books the ritual of these books is that i've seen that um you know by sort of cycling through similar ones every night you get through get to this idea where you see oh like her not the, the her knowledge is actually um maybe increasing at a higher pace in a way that has so many levels to it like I'm just my heart is totally open I can absolutely see the benefit to both you and your daughter for learning and we had just been talking about how it takes incremental and repetition to really learn something so mm -hmm. starting that young mm -hmm. building that kind of interest in in participating in this and so you mentioned at the beginning that outside world there's lots of threats and when we talk about um, learning to to be out in the world, do you have any rituals, or do you have any? Have you heard of any rituals where people can regain their sort of connection with the earth and the planet? Mm -hmm. Well, I think if you're not walking outside, you should be. That's probably Just the first one. Right Just on getting ground. your feet on the ground. Um, I know one of the things for me is that I often forget how much I like being barefoot on the ground. Right, as a way of connecting with the earth. So often we're insulated actually from the earth. I mean, think of our shoes as being rubber, is actually, you know, the, the earth and our bodies have some sort of electromagnetic field or some sort of energy passing between us. And that maybe some of the are things that we, other things that we do are unaware of are actually um, uh, preventing us from connecting with the earth in such a way that, you know, we might not be able to um, glean higher benefit from. Personally, that walking on the earth brings me in touch with mm -hmm. um, with with my connection with me in the world, yeah. and the world being a part of me. Some may call that ritual to walk out and make sure that I don't lose touch with that. Mm -hmm. um, what what would you call that? Is that something that could be a ritual? I think so. Mind, yeah. At, at, at I also sacred, think it's just yes, absolutely. Yeah. I think I'm going to call it that. Okay. I'm going to take that on. Yeah. And I think that I've really been playing with this idea is that you know maybe the moon has more of an effect on our daily lives than we realize. You know, we see it go through its cycles. You know, right from you know the new moon and to the gibbous and to the full moon. And then I was really thinking about how that actually sort of just like how it moves the tides, it possibly also moves. Um, you know, urges or desires or feelings or emotions within, within our being. And if we're not conscious of what the moon's doing and maybe being our own personal scientist and reflecting back, I'm like, is this, you know, is what's, what's happening up there? I'm feeling this way down here, but I don't necessarily understand 
you know, you might try to put blame in areas trying to, to uh, uh, you know, in the evaluation of why you're, you know, what, what is it about what's happening around you that's causing you to feel this way? And I think you have to include all of this, but you also have to look up there, right? And so when we look to the sky and you see everyone knows that on a cloudy day, you know, they have, maybe they have a little less energy, a little less motivated to get things done. And then when those clouds break and, and, and I see, you know, people want to you know, get outside, you know, do something that they've been putting off for a while, right? And it's like this idea that we follow the sun, it's very much a part of our lives. And they thought, is there something we're missing with the moon? And so I sort of, you know, sort of, you hear these sort of, you under the full moon that things get a little bit crazy or things like that. I said, well, what if there is sort of a natural inclination to sort of have that, maybe that side of you that has, you know, maybe those vices or those things that you do that you don't think are your best for, you know, would contribute to your best, you know, prescribed future self. Um, I thought, well, well, maybe there's an out, maybe, maybe you have to have a time for that. And so what I started doing is having a little more, maybe a little more fun under the full moon intentionally wondering if that would be, you know, something that would actually sort of uh, create a routine where it was more around, cycled around something that you could, that you could measure. I think when people think about something like, oh, we party on the weekend or we party on a day off. And so all of a sudden you find yourself without work and always off. If that was your ritual and it was simply on sort of internal situations that sort of allowed you to, you know, engage in activities that you maybe only did at a certain frequency that was healthy, but now you're doing it at a higher frequency that's not healthy, everything in moderation, right? I said, so what, maybe maybe at a time when the moon is full, maybe that's a time for you to sort of explore those feelings of like, hey, you know, those, those things that you said, if I did these things every day, my life would probably be a mess, but if I did them once in a while, I'd probably have some good stories to tell, and, you know, some yes. great, great experiences, yeah. right? And then I think that, also play with that idea is that under the new moon is that you would actually go in the opposite direction. So maybe maybe you become a little bit more internal and, and reflective on, on, on who you want, what kind of person you want to come, what kind of character you want to build within yourself. And so, and I found that it would it was it was beneficial. Right? I guess, and so. And you look forward to the next. Yeah, you kind of look forward. <laughs> yeah, something, and then you don't get to say you know when the moon is full, right? It's not based on you know. Whether you just got paid, you know, so and so is over. It's like actually, you know, I'm really committed to this idea of, of challenging myself in this in this way, creating a ritual for myself, and then seeing how, and then being your own objective observer of how it works on your site. You can look back and say, well, have I grown from this in a way that for me? I've it sounds like ancient times. Yeah, <laughs> I would say. And, and the same story, like, yeah. like you were saying. Well, that happens when the moon was. Yeah. And they went, oh. Yeah, and so, and then if you, you know, and then, you know, it's a way of, of looking at some things more cyclically and saying, well, if other people wanted to join in this, you know, ritual, that you would all have people understanding that, hey, well, when this time comes, we're going to gather in a way that we'll all be invited to the next gathering, right? You know, it's like, you know, we're, you know, it doesn't have to be based on uh, their religious understandings, right? Are their intellectual. Um, achievements it doesn't have to be that it doesn't have to be what unites them. It just could be the fact that we want to uh, get together in a way that everyone wants to get together. Thank you so much for sharing the concept of ritual, but making it very practical and very much about connection, mm -hmm. personal and community and family and the world mm -hmm. and the stars and yeah. the moon. Mm -hmm. It was really lovely to hear and to be reminded that everything we do we can actually do it intentionally and keep doing it because we've gained so many levels of knowledge um, by doing it and holding true to what we mm -hmm. want to express in the world. Did I capture that? I feel like you captured it better than I could have oh, captured I was, it. Yeah, I was very getting... concise. <laughs> and, um... uh, but what I wondered now was um, if there was any last word that you would like to share with our viewers. You were mentioning that You've do, done a lot of reflection on this and it's served you, it's inspired you. I think that if, if I have anything is that um, build your rituals out of love. That if you do it for, um, you know, um, the betterment of the people around you, that you're saying that I've, I've found this beneficial in my life, I want to share this ritual with you. And that, um, and then through that it builds trust and through trust you can build, you can build a solid love with uh, the people in your community.
Thank you so much. And with physical distancing, we're, you're um, free from my embrace. <laughs> okay, we're about six feet away. We do okay. the social distance. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>